Hey guys, Jim here from Drink a Beer Play a Game. I love me some pinball games. Well, most of the time. Today we're taking a look at pinball for the Philips CDI. I'm going to need a lot more beer for this one. Released in 1991, this was produced by Capital Disc Interactive and published by Philips Interactive Media of America. It's a Philips CDI exclusive! That's the only pinball game I know of, but you know what? I am no expert on the CDI, so let's just get right into the review with the graphics and... Oh, wow. Alright, let me be somewhat fair here. Some of the levels look like early Flash animations, and they aren't that bad and some of them are just weird mishmashes of badly blended together color. At its best, it's mediocre, and at its worst, it's pretty ugly. When it comes to the sound, there really isn't that much. On the overall menu screen for picking your tables, you'll get either a mishmash of random sound effects or an actual music track for each table. Each table can have a somewhat different kind of sound for all the bumpers and targets that you hit, so cool, it keeps it thematic. Here's a problem. There is almost no other sound on any of the tables besides what you hit. So it's just, it's empty sounding. There's no music in the background. There's no jingles. They don't even give you the effect of being in like an old pinball hall. It's just dead quiet besides the sounds you make. It's actually really off-putting and it just takes away from the overall experience. The control. The control is actually pretty simple. The one button lets you hit the left flipper. The two button lets you hit the right flipper. And the D-pad will let you tilt the table. The tilting of the table is actually on like a weird delay. I don't know if they're trying to emulate like a real life table where it has to build momentum, but it just seems to not work half the time. Having the two flipper buttons next to each other is just so... it's not good. They tell you that you can go to the options menu to change the layout, which is good, but I'm just looking at it strictly from the default. If you have a third button, because some of the controllers do, then that'll hit both flippers at the same time, but the left flipper is like weirdly delayed, so they don't even truly go at the same time. I don't know how they messed that up. There's a bunch of different controller options for the CDI, and I actually have a custom-built adapter so I can use Super Nintendo controllers on it. This is how I was playing it for the most part. Does this look comfortable? Well, guess what? It isn't. And when you look at the designs of the CDI controllers, I mean, outside of the one that looks like a Genesis pad, none of them are really that comfortable. And let's move on to the gameplay. It is simple. It, the tables are so simple. You get four different tables, and every one of them has a gimmick. The first is Cyber. No, not that kind of Cyber. You get a gravity bar in the middle, which you can use to throw at the targets to get points. Whoopee! Then you have Dogfight, which is probably my favorite one. You have an actual fuel gauge for your flippers, so you can't be just spamming the hell out of them. You gotta be kind of strategic with it. If you hit all the planes, you get a super plane in the middle, and if you hit that, you get a thousand points, and it refuels you. So that's kind of cool. Next up is Spring Break, and uh, you have umbrellas that are targets and some other crap around there. The main gist of it is getting to the top and spelling out Spring Break from the beach balls that are in the ocean. And once you do that, you can go into the side store for 2,000 points. That's really it. This is probably my second favorite table of the bunch. It can be fun somewhat, but it's still just so basic. And lastly is Meltdown, where... This probably has the most going on in it, but again, with the physics of the table, good luck getting any of it activated. You have the reactor in the middle, which can just shoot you to an instant death. You have the targets at the top, which can be hard to control with the flippers up top. And you have all the different targets on the sides, so... This one gives you a lot to do, but it's still just not that fun. And it's just yellow. There's so much yellow and just ugly colors here. This is kind of hard to just go through to even talk about these tables. They're so bare bones. It's like you're playing tables from the 50s, but not fun and not charming. They really went out of their way to do as bare minimum as possible here. From what I can tell, if you get 15,000 points in any of the tables, you can get an extra ball, so that's cool. Outside of that, it's just you're trying to set a high score. That's all you're doing. When it comes to originality, I... I mean, I guess it's the first pinball game on the CDI, and uh, you won't see these tables anywhere else, so there you go there. And when it comes to replayability, I mean, let's face it here. These tables are so bland that 
unless you're some kind of masochist, you're not going to spend more than 10 minutes on any one of them. You're just going to play it, go, oh, that was a mistake, and you're going to put it away. So I see no real reason to ever come back outside of just trying to set a new high score for yourself, which, hey, have at it, why not? When it comes to beer, oh, Jesus, God. It's almost hard to recommend a beer because why would you even play this game? So why would you waste a beer on it? But if you gotta do it, why don't you drink some Steel Reserve? So you can get nice and messed up as you're playing it. Maybe you'll get some sick enjoyment out of it, and in the time it takes you to finish a 40 of this bad boy, you'll be destroyed, and you'll have had enough time to play through all four tables and get sick of them. The beer itself, I mean, it tastes like crap, but it's only there to be cheap and to get you drunk, so... I guess it's drinkable enough as long as to keep it cold. I can't think of a much worse beer to pair this game with. <laughs> Still not enough. Well, at the end of the day, what do I think of Pinball? On the Philips CDI here? Yeah, it's pretty terrible. I mean, what are you really going to expect here? The game is just... It's not unplayable, but it's really, really hard to get into. Luckily, it gives you the four different tables, so you might be able to find one that you kind of gel with and you'll enjoy, but... Holy crap, you want to talk about bare bones? This is it. The graphics are, at their best, they're mediocre. The sound isn't even there. The control. Oh my god, the control. And there's just no fun factor here, really. I get that the tables are trying to... Mimic, I guess, older tables, like from the 50s, where you could really do not that much. So it's really just all bumpers and crap like that, but it's just boring. Each table has a gimmick, which is kind of cool, but none of them are even that fun to accomplish, and it just lets you play a little bit more. It's just... If I had to think of positives, um, it's dirt cheap. I mean, you don't see CDI games anywhere, at least in North America, where I live, but... I mean, you can go on eBay and still get it with complete in case with all the inserts like I did. A little beat up, uh, but besides that, for like six bucks. So, if you have a CDI, like I do, then it's a cheap, easy thing to add to your collection, especially if you're a pinball fan. It's not going to turn anyone into pinball fans, and true pinball fans aren't going to like it, but it's out there for you. Alright guys, that'll do it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, why not give it a like? And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We have a whole bunch of reviews, hardware reviews, pinball reviews, and we are the home of the Power Hour podcast. Let me know below if you've ever played this game, or really anything on the CDI. And this is by far Miley's favorite pinball game. What's yours? Till next time, guys. Cheers.